Here are the top stories for today, January 12, 2022. The government further tightens movement curbs for unvaccinated persons. Vaccination cards will now have to be presented in Metro Manila before riding public transport. Areas outside of Metro Manila follow suit in restricting the movement of the unvaccinated as they brace for a surge in infections, primarily due to the Omicron variant. Malacanang raises concerns over the alleged hacking of the Commission on Election Servers even as the poll body continues to check the veracity of reports over the incident. And the Philippine Sports Commission says it will wait for the easing of COVID-19 alert levels before resuming the training of athletes. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade ordered the enforcement of a no vaccination, no ride, no entry policy while alert level 3 or higher remains hoisted in Metro Manila. In his department order, a person is considered fully vaccinated against COVID-19 two weeks after receiving their second dose in a two-dose vaccination series or two weeks after a single-dose vaccine such as the Janssen vaccine. Exempted from the no-vaccination, no-ride policy are persons with medical conditions that prevent their full COVID-19 vaccination as shown by a duly signed medical certificate and persons who will buy essential goods and services as shown by a duly issued Barangay Health Pass or other proof to justify the said travel. Tugad has said the policy will be effective immediately after publication in the official Gazette or a newspaper of general circulation and the submission of a copy with the Office of the National Administrative Register at the University of the Philippines Law Center. COVID-19 vaccines play a big role in the healthcare system of the country. As such, more local government units are implementing measures specifically for unvaccinated individuals to prevent them from contracting the disease. The details from Chris Crismundo. In Pasay City, police manning the checkpoints are checking for the vaccination cards of the motorists as the local government intensifies efforts to curb the rising number of COVID-19 cases. Some 828 houses in 64 barangays are already placed under granular lockdown. Pasay City General Hospital has reached its full capacity for COVID-19 patients. In Olongapo City, the no vaccine, no entry policy is in effect since Monday, January 10. Mayor Roland Paulino Jr. has ordered the setting up of border checkpoints to ensure that those who are coming in are fully vaccinated. He also reminded his constituents to strictly comply with the minimum health standards amid the threat of the highly transmissible Omicron variant. In Albay, unvaccinated individuals are banned from indoor and al fresco dining, hotels, country clubs, leisure trips, and similar establishments in public transportation. For authorized persons outside their residence, they will need to present a negative RT-PCR test result taken every two weeks at the checkpoints. Meanwhile, inoculated individuals are advised to bring their vaccination cards at all times. Meanwhile, Baguio City's Health Services Unit or HSU is on heightened alert in monitoring COVID-19 patient admissions in the hospitals. This as 42% of COVID-19 cases are unvaccinated individuals. Five COVID-19 deaths logged in December 2021 were also unvaccinated individuals. Meanwhile, more than 85% of the individuals who contracted the virus after vaccination were either asymptomatic or only experienced mild symptoms and did not need hospitalization. For the PA Newsroom, I'm Chris Chris Mundo. Vaccines do work regardless of brand and being vaccinated will help protect against severe forms of COVID-19, whatever the variant is. This was the message stressed by Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Negrales amid reports of increasing Omicron detection and rising COVID-19 cases in the country in the past few days. Of the 33,169 new cases as of January 10, 
Secretary Nograles reported that 97.1% exhibit mild symptoms or are asymptomatic. He said that while there are more COVID-positive cases now than during the September 2021 surge, only a few develop severe and critical forms of the disease. Please allow us to reiterate that the protection provided by vaccines comes not just in the form of reducing the likelihood of infection. It also comes in the form of reducing the risk of developing severe COVID symptoms. Pag bakunado po kayo, malaki po ang chance na kung mahawa man kayo ng COVID, magiging mild lang po ang symptoms ninyo. Meanwhile, more than 71.16 million adult Filipinos are expected to have received booster vaccine doses against COVID-19 by the end of September of this year. They will come from the projected 90 million fully vaccinated Filipinos before the end of June. Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. says among the challenges they encountered in the vaccination drive are the rising infection rate among healthcare workers and preparations for the upcoming elections. He says regions most devastated by typhoon Odette still have low vaccination output as electricity has yet to be completely restored. The Department of Health says people infected with COVID-19 in the National Capital Region are 60% less likely to be hospitalized compared to those in other areas. This was attributed to the high vaccination rate in the region. In an online media briefing, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere noted that COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila surged during the holidays but most of them were not hospitalized. Verjera said, decoupling is being observed in the NCR. It is a situation where the increase in infections does not translate to the same increase in the proportion of severe and critical cases. Meantime, IATF Subtechnical Working Group member Dr. John Wong emphasized that NCR's vaccination status is protecting the area from a high hospitalization rate. Uh, vaccines continue to be very effective, no? whether we're talking about Alpha, Beta, Delta, or Omicron. No? So it's still effective versus Omicron. No? Uh, for uh, symptomatic, uh, symptomatic disease and transmission, this is when uh, this is where uh, the <coughs> uh, protection by vaccination no, has decreased, no? and that is for that is the reason for for boosters. No? So uh, vaccination and boosting still still uh, are still our best uh, public health interventions for for omicron vaccines are secretary carlito galvez jr said they are eyeing the use of other brands of coronavirus jabs for the younger population this as the government targets to start the administration of primary doses to some 12.5 million minors aged 5 to 11 years old within the second quarter of the year. Galvez says the lower dosages of the Pfizer vaccine might be available by the end of January. Kami po'y nakapag-ugnayan na po sa ibang mga brand para po makapagkaroon po tayo ng EUA dito po sa uh, ages uh, 3 to 11. Meanwhile, Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles emphasized the need for coordination between national and local governments to ensure that vaccination and other government services will remain operational. This after Galvez expressed concern that the upcoming elections would have an impact on the daily vaccination output since the local government units will be preoccupied when the election campaign kicks off next month. We in the national government will do is make sure na hindi mahamper um, ang aming trabaho. We will continue to focus on that. We'll have the DILG uh, to, to ensure that the uh, local government units deliver um, as far as vaccination efforts are concerned and even as far as response to COVID-19 is, is, is concerned. We will make sure that the uh, vaccination and our COVID response is not politicized. Um, and that everybody stays and remains neutral, um, especially sa pamamahagi natin ng vaccines, dapat walang pinipili yan. Um, and uh, we will make sure that the targets are met. The city government of Mabalakat, Pampanga is launching a home care system for residents with mild COVID-19 symptoms. More on this from Marita Mawahi. 
The city government of Mabalacat, Pampanga will roll out its COVID-19 home care system to manage residents with mild symptoms. The approach aims to extend the city's health management programs for infected residents within the safety of their own homes. This will also prevent medical and quarantine facilities in the city from getting overwhelmed. Under the home care system, all patients will be under the supervision of a designated rural health unit nurse and physician. Regular consultations will be performed through telemedicine and the emergency hotline number. Patients will also be provided with a home care package that includes a thermometer, a pulse oximeter, and medicines to manage patients' symptoms. Households will be subjected to ocular inspection to make sure that home infrastructures are suitable for quarantine and that no family member will be put at risk. In Negros Occidental, the provincial government has scheduled a three-day walk-in vaccination at the capital-owned Negros residences for employees who want to avail of COVID-19 booster doses. The provincial health office will cater to 500 personnel per day on a first-come, first-served basis. Currently, vaccines available for booster shots are Moderna and AstraZeneca. Those who have been vaccinated by Sinovac AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna jobs after at least three months and by the single dose Johnson after at least two months can already avail of booster doses. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Moahe. Still ahead, another 168,000 doses of Janssen vaccine arrive in the country, the first shipment of the single shot jabs for this year. And the Philippine economy's growth is seen to be at 6 to 7 percent this year as it continues to pick up from the pandemic's impact. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed our lives for the worse. Lives and jobs were lost and economies reached a meltdown. Thanks to the arrival of safe and effective vaccines, we are one step closer to normalcy. It's time to do our part, get vaccinated for our safety and for our recovery. If you are there in that community, go there and have yourself vaccinated by any of the vaccines available. They are all potent, they are all uh, effective. I would like to appeal to all our Kababayans, please get vaccinated against COVID-19 and be the government partner in preventing further spread of the disease. I encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as possible time. These vaccines are safe and they are the key to reopening our society. The need for international solidarity and cooperation cannot be made clearer than this pandemic because everyone is safe. No one is safe globally until everybody is safe. Vaccines work. The Philippines has so far received 3.4 million doses of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine doses from the United States. This as local officials welcome the arrival of 168,000 of these jabs at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport on Tuesday. Dr. Paz Corrales, medical consultant of the National Task Force Against COVID-19, said the latest donation is another boost to help end the pandemic, especially amid the spread of the Omicron variant. 
Kerala said, with a continuous arrival of vaccines, there is no reason not to avail of protection against severe infections and even death. Overall, 12.9 million doses of the single-dose jab manufactured by Janssen Pharmaceuticals have been donated to the country, including about 9.4 million doses received directly from the COVAX facility. The total number of delivered vaccines, both procured and donated, has reached over 213 million. The Commission on Elections has removed the Malasakit movement from the roster of party list groups in the 2022 national elections. The poll body on Tuesday rejected with finality the accreditation of the group led by former government official Celine Pialago. The Malasakit movement aims to represent barangay workers and frontliners in Congress. Pialago, also the group's first nominee, served as spokesperson of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA and the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or NTFLCAC. Meanwhile, the COMELEC plans to hold a virtual promulgation of the decision on the disqualification cases filed against presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos on or before January 5th, 17. First Division presiding Commissioner Rowena Guanzon said over Twitter that the decision will be read in the session hall on live stream. On Monday, the division raffled off the disqualification cases against Marcos that are deemed submitted for resolution. Petitioners Bonifacio Ilagan and former lawmakers Satur Ocampo and Lisa Massa said Marcos is not eligible to run for president since he is a convicted criminal. The Akbayan party list also petitioned against Marcos on the same grounds. Abu Bakar Mangelen, who claims to be the duly elected chair of Partido Federal ng Pilipinas, meanwhile asked to declare as null and void Marcos' certificate of nomination and acceptance. Malacanang on Tuesday urged the Commission on Elections to give updates on the reported hacking of its servers. Acting Presidential Spokesperson Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nagrales said the palace is concerned over the alleged breach. Nograla said the palace will wait for the Comelec to release an official statement. On Monday, the Manila Bulletin reported that hackers were allegedly able to download more than 60 gigabytes of data that could possibly affect the May 2022 elections on January 8. The hackers managed to download files that included usernames and pins of vote counting machines or VCMs. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez questioned the accuracy of the report, although he said the Comelec is validating the alleged data breach. Meanwhile, Sama Representative Edgar Mary Sarmiento proposed a joint congressional oversight investigation on the alleged Comelec server hacking. Sarmiento said Congress has the power to check the implementation of Republic Act 8436 or the automated election law. He suspected poor network security protocols or an inside job as the cause of the breach. Sarmiento also wants the uh, author of the Manila Bulletin story to cooperate in the probe to see if there is enough basis to suspect that the poll results can be manipulated electronically. In our business news, an investment arm expects the Philippine economy to return to its 6 to 7% growth trajectory in 2022 despite the COVID-19 pandemic and the threat of the Omicron variant. First, Metro Investment Corporation, the investment banking arm of the Metro Bank Group, said this year's economic growth will be driven by sustained domestic demand, easing of inflation, election expenditures, and accelerated government spending on infrastructure. FMIC President Jose Patricio Dumlao said business and consumer confidence are cautiously positive with the wider availability of vaccines and relaxation of lockdowns. University of Asia and the Pacific economist Dr. Victor Abola, meanwhile, said the 6 to 7 percent gross domestic product projection this year will be led by the construction and manufacturing sector. Abola said the business process outsourcing is a major contributor to the resiliency of the economy amid the pandemic. Aside from BPO revenues, FMIC Chairman Francisco Sebastian said the overseas Filipino workers' remittances are boosting the economy. The Department of Agriculture in Northern Mindanao introduced interventions for farmers to prevent the recurring increase of bulb onion prices in the region. 
The interventions involve support for farmers' cooperatives, procuring of seeds, conducting trials for bulb onion production, coordinating with regions through the Agriculture Marketing and Assistance Division, issuing import permits, and advising the public to practice urban container household gardening. The DA said the bulb onion price hike during the holidays in 2021 was artificial due to low importation of the commodity. On Tuesday, the National Plant Quarantine Services Division inspected 500 metric tons of bulb onions at the Mindanao Container Terminal in Tagoloan, Misamis Oriental, which are ready for release along with 52 containers of bulb onion from Davao. The prices of red onion reportedly started to increase last December to as high as 450 pesos a kilo. Up next, the PNP forms a task force to probe the bombing of a bus in North Cotabato. And safety first, the Philippine Sports Commission says training activities would have to wait until COVID-19 restrictions are eased. More stories when the PNA Newsroom returns. The Philippine National Police has formed a special investigation task group focusing on the bombing of a Mindanao Star bus in Barangay Upper San Mateo, Alyosan, Cotabato last Tuesday. The task group, led by Colonel Michael Lebanan of PRO-12, will supervise the investigation. SOC Sergeant PNP Regional Director Brigadier General Alexander Tagum has directed all police units in the region to be on guard against peace saboteurs, especially terrorists targeting innocent civilians. He expressed hope for the fast recovery of the injured and assured the victims that those behind the bombing will face the full force of the law. Meanwhile, one of the victims of the bus bombing, however, died Tuesday afternoon while undergoing treatment in Cotabato City. The five-year-old son of victim Haron Sulaiman died due to multiple shrapnel wounds all over his body. Bomb experts said the improvised bomb was planted near the rear portion of the bus and set off through a mobile phone. Investigators are looking at extortionists to be behind the said attack. North Cotabato Governor Nancy Katamko, meanwhile, condemned the attack, describing it as an act of evil. And in other news, the DOH Center for Health Development in the Ilocos region plans to involve some 1.9 million children and teens aged 1 to 19 years old in the National Deworming Month this January. CHD1 Medical Officer Dr. Reol Bobby said the deworming activity will be community-based due to the ongoing pandemic. 
Bobby said the healthcare workers will go house to house to the target individuals to distribute the deworming drug albendazole. He added that the DOH has allocated the number of albendazole doses to the provincial health offices of the provinces in the region since last December. Bobby said it is important to deworm children as a parasitic worms have effects on their physical and mental health. He added the parasitic worm shares with the nutrition of its host, thus robbing the body of its needed nutrients. The deworming activity is done annually every January and July. The Department of the Interior and Local Government vows to help provide benefits to force multipliers who help maintain peace and order in La Castellana Negros Occidental. Mayor Romaila Nicor Mangilimutan shared her concern on the risks faced by members of the Barangay Intelligence Network and Barangay Peacekeeping Action Teams. At present, there are more than 500 trained and accredited volunteers in areas affected by the atrocities of the Communist New People's Army. Under Secretary Jonathan Malaya has asked the mayor to send letter requests to the DILG and the Philippine Army regarding her concerns. Meanwhile, the mayor said, at present, La Castellana is no longer infiltrated by the NPA. However, there are still masses that support them, especially along the boundary of Negros Oriental. The latest atrocity in the area is the killing of Mario Landisa, a resident of Sitio Mantuhod in Barangay Kabangkungan last December 20. The Philippine Sports Commission is waiting for the go signal from the interagency task force before it could allow national athletes to train again. Training has been deferred with the NCR Plus area currently under Alert Level 3. PSC Chair Butch Ramirez said they may resume practice at the Phil Sports Arena and Rizal Memorial Sports Complex when the IATF lowers the alert level. He confirmed that the said venues remain as quarantine facilities now following the COVID-19 spike. Ramirez noted that if the Southeast Asian Games push through in May, athletes only have almost three months to train. Meantime, the PSC has allowed some athletes to undergo bubble training in other provinces. Ramirez hopes that the IATF will place Metro Manila back to Alert Level 2 by next month so that the athletes based in the provinces can finally train again. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The government further tightens movement curbs for unvaccinated persons. Vaccination cards will now have to be presented in Metro Manila before riding public transport. Areas outside of Metro Manila follow suit in restricting the movement of the unvaccinated as they brace for a surge in infections, primarily due to the Omicron variant. Malacanang raises concerns over the alleged hacking of the Commission on Election Servers even as the poll body continues to check the veracity of reports over the incident. And the Philippine Sports Commission says it will wait for the easing of COVID-19 alert levels before resuming the training of athletes. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day and stay safe to everyone.